Hello and welcome to Upload, a program where we take our collective thoughts and ideas and upload them to your mind. I'm Andrew Moody and to my left is Bobby Del Rio. Hi. Hello. And to my other left is Todd Van Allen. Hi, I found my shaver. <laughs> and so, yeah, you look great, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and to my other, other left is Lewis Taylor. How many lefts do you have? Was that subtle? Was that subtle? Did you, did you guys see that? Was that subtle? Like, oh. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that we were talking about last week that uh, we feel we should continue to talk about, because we didn't really touch upon it, is uh, what happened with Ahmad Arbery and um, especially mm -hmm. like uh, in this one article, some of the comments that Trump made, uh, he said, um, Oh no. Oh I God. A, <laughs> that looks like a really good young guy. It's a really disturbing situation to me. It could be something we didn't see on tape. Um, oh, you prick. Hmm. Yeah. No. Any thoughts? No. Lewis, do you have any thoughts? I mean, you know, he's going to play to his base. Um, so, it, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. I, my, and, and we talked, I talked about this a uh, bit um, on another podcast. It's like it happened so often. There was that young woman that was killed, her and her, I, I think her boyfriend was wounded uh, when police came to the wrong house uh, right. looking for someone that was already arrested. Um, it speaks strongly to the historical divide in America um, on the American take on race. Race, in the, it seems, in the American mind is um, equivalent to uh, savagery versus civilization. And any act you take against a savage is, um, is a, valid, uh, a valid response in order to protect civilization. So it's, it's such a tribal split uh, that has always been uh, the potential festering wound that destroys any possibility of, of America reaching its potential. They uh, come over from Mexico, the rapists and the murderers and thieves and uh, some of them possibly might be good people. This is the first I've heard that he might be Mexican. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Go Bobby. But it's just how Trump talks, right? It's yeah. like, you know, it's, it's like, oh, like it's like he doesn't blatantly say it, but like he does. Everyone knows exactly what he means. And it's like, oh, well, you know, too bad, but... He probably had a gun. Am I right? Black guys, mm -hmm. trouble. Am I right? This is what he well, does. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's an interesting quote. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find it um, during the Japanese internments uh, in the 40s in British Columbia. And how, um, well, I'll see if I can find it. And I'll. Um, you the, to, to, to Bobby's point of him just filling in the gaps, it's at the point now, it, it probably hasn't been this far off this mark, but like in filling in those gaps, it doesn't even matter what those gaps are filled with. Mm. It, is, it, it is just going, you're just leaving a pause where people can go of, of a particular mindset, ah, that's what he means, right? And it, and it, and it distills down to not even, it's, it's, it's anyone, not me. You know, it's not even specific to black anymore, I don't think. I don't even think it's, it's distilled down to specific instances of anti-Semitism or uh, racism against Asians or anything like that. It's now they just go, right? And they go, we got it. And then they just fill it in, backfill with whatever racism that they wish to do at that particular point in time and then walk away feeling sated and everything's fine. That's the problem. Look, and I know we're going to talk about it later, but it's like, it's, it's, that's the strategy, right? It's like Obamagate. Yeah. Let's take a, someone we hate and mm. let's just make it sound bad, like Watergate. And then you, you tell us, like, he's literally like, yeah. Obamagate, well, we all know what he did. And mm -hmm. what's that? It's exactly, it's that yeah. fill in the blank thing. It's like, what's the worst 
you know, act of xenophobia yeah. that your mind can come up with. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Well, I actually stayed at the Obama Gate Hotel. It was okay. The pool was fine. <laughs> uh, nice service towel. sucked. Well, let's get into the Obama Gate because, um, you know, just recently, uh, I mean, what it came out of was uh, he was being challenged mm. uh, by a reporter, I believe. And then he started tweeting hard about, because the reporter was challenging him about like what's happening with COVID and- He being Trump, COVID. right? Yeah, yeah, so Trump was challenged and then in a furious barrage of 126 yeah. tweets, mm -hmm. the third highest daily total of his presidency, Trump unleashed a relatively unfamiliar hashtag on the world, hashtag Obamagate. Right. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. He's just so dumb. That's like, <laughs> like, like, you know, like, and this, this is where I think racism for me comes in. Everyone mm. thinks that old white men now are that. Mm. And I hate that. Yeah. You know, they just look at me and go, okay, boomer, I'm Gen X motherfucker. <laughs> like, I have <laughs> God, got no time for this. I, I had the I Smith the, albums to pay yeah, for those you. receipts. Nirvana you know? was my high school. That, come on, don't call yeah. me boomer for crazy. <laughs> I read <laughs> Douglas Copeland before he was irrelevant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I mean, I actually would disagree with you, Todd. I actually don't think he's stupid. I think that no. um, he's playing his, there's a, there's a method to his madness and that he's mm -hmm. got a playbook that he uses and it, uh, it's very carefully uh, constructed for his base and people that uh, support him. And um, I actually don't like, uh, as much as I would love to say that he's, you know, racist and stupid, I don't, I don't think he's stupid. He's racist. And, I, mean, look, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not saying he doesn't have a plan. What I am saying is like, because to, to Andrew's point, you're absolutely right. He does have a playbook and you can see like, as he's going through every one of these daily news conferences, it's just, oh, we're on page 18 now. Like yeah, it's exactly. the exact same, it's the exact same thing. I do, however, feel like it, like regardless of that playbook, which was probably helped to be established by Stephen Miller and, and all the other yeah. GOP cronies that have just completely decimated that party. I think we all know in his heart of hearts, he is thick as a fucking brick. The oh, whole yeah. inject yourself with Clorox. Could that work? I don't know. Uh, hey, I have a chloroquine stock. Would that help? I don't know. Maybe. Um, at, get him to find half the countries he's angry at on a map and, well, and see what he does. Like, that's what I mean. It's like, you know what he's, is interesting? He's, he's tailored stupidity. What like, I find about interesting about Trump is that I, I do agree that maybe, like, as he's aged, he's become unhinged. Like, I think there's actually mm -hmm. uh, mental health issues. Yeah. But, and this is like excrement in my mouth to say, but when I remember watching an interview with him, I want to say the late eighties, early nineties, and he was giving political analysis when he was just Donald Trump, the brand. Right. Yeah. And he was very, very astute. Like he, he yeah. like totally yeah. grasped the nuances and the complexities, the political landscape. And he wasn't even running for anything. He was just yeah. Trump. So, I, look, I don't know if he's just become stupid, but that mind is still there. I think the whole thing for me comes down to uh, there are so many different definitions of intelligence that I, I don't even know what the word means anymore. Uh, there are people that consider themselves intelligent. One, even it just as a species, I want a second opinion on our intelligence. I, I like we just keep telling ourselves we're an intelligent species. No one else has weighed in on that. There is no second opinion on our intelligence. So I am know, fuck that. I am uh, I am team fuck this. Give it to the dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. The dolphins just, are looking at it going. Uh, just you don't want it. What do you? What do you I mean? I bow to our new king flipper. <laughs> I, I, I will say though, um, look, and, and I, I get this sort of ambiguity of intelligence argument, but even if we're if we can define it as by political analysis, right? Like that's the form of intelligence that I'm talking about. Um, he he has it, or at least he had it. And he would have had to. I, here's here's what I think happened. Okay, I think that he he's kind of like an actor that's been playing a character for so many years as a series lead that the, the lines between where the character ends and the human begins, they start to blur. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, Moody? Yeah. Like, have you ever played like a role for multiple seasons or a really long time? And it, it's just, at some point, you almost lose yourself in it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. also, too, it, it, the real Donald Trump actually bleeds through his persona so that we can see flashes mm-hmm. of who he really is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was going to. Have- I haven't been able to talk to Andrew since he did that five month run of Angels in America where he played Roy <laughs> Cohn. <laughs> And he just, you couldn't talk to him for a month. That was the worst. Really? Just, it broke you. It broke you like Jim Carrey. <laughs> well, look, to be honest, like, I remember I, I directed an actor in a, in a project that mm-hmm. I'm not going to say who, uh, but, you know, he's playing a psychopath and he, Andrew Moody is Andrew. <laughs> and he ended up like he was playing a psychopath and I wrote the character and everything. And then he was like, getting into fights on the street mm. for right. weeks, like while we were doing this project, right? And, it, and it, it's, it's like certain people, it's like their role absorption, I think is so high that, and he just seems like that kind of guy because there's no way that he's so stupid because he, this, I mean, and I hate to say it because I hate the guy, but he was so smart. Go and watch mm. interviews with Trump in the 90s. He, mm-hmm. he knows all, mm. like polit- politics, he knows the nuances of this and that and the public party and this, and here's the strategy. Blah, blah, blah. And now he's like Homer Simpson. Right. Mm-hmm. I but think I just, a lot yeah. of what's going on with rather than, and, and I think there's a difference between a theater actor and a film actor. I think that he started out as a theater actor and it's like that call and response thing, right? Mm-hmm. He was constantly getting a response from both sides, he would have been vilified, especially when he was, uh, what was that, uh, that case in uh, New York with the kids? Oh, the, were, um, the uh, not the, Bro- the Brooklyn Five or the Brooklyn Four? Uh, yeah, or five, maybe was four it five, five. Four? Right, right, right. Yeah, the documentary that. Um, yeah, I thought uh, there was five. Let's say five. Yeah, but you, you know he's going to get massive support you know the the response and the call from that uh as well as vilification from the left and and you could see that yin yang that that kind of dual push pull thing happening with him where this is where i get adoration this is where i get hatred and vilification you people don't support my ego (laughs) you know what i'll tell you like the thing that Donald Trump realized, and, I, and this is my theory, uh, and it's not based on any evidence, but I think in his time, you know, as a New York uh, real estate guy, um, he uh, became a chameleon because he needed to make relationships with people to try and save his failing empire. So right. he had to, he was forced mm-hmm. to. Um, and then when he ran for president, maybe on a lark, maybe he thought it'd be fun. Maybe, I don't know why he did it, but I think he started off trying to be a politician. And then at some point in time, people doing research, and there was a group of people around him doing research saying no, like Steve Bannon and all those guys saying, no, 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 just say what you feel. Just, just say, cause I know what you feel, Donald. So just say it, say it out loud, see what happens. Right. And at first it didn't work for him at first, like, you know, Mitt Romney was the heir apparent to the Republican Party. And then something, people started to listen to him and really connect with the fact that he's being genuine and he's not a politician. There was a black president. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that. <laughs> yes or no. Yes or no. Like, right. I, I would say, because here's the thing, like, you know, Hillary Clinton did win the popular vote. So it's not like yeah. uh, America completely trashed her and didn't want to vote for her. No. But he he did he did respond to people who don't like politicians who don't yeah. want to see people dissemble yeah. and but they, they also they poll them they also are polling people to see what the wedge issues are right this is just common political strategy yeah. they're figuring out that's this is why the republican party is sort of like anti-gay and pro-christian and anti-muslim and all these things I don't even know if they care. I don't think that the Republican politicians care at all about those issues. I think it's like their base mm-hmm. does, so they start to shift the party where the power base is. Yeah, right. I think there was a shift though. I, I think at one point um, around, 
the development of the Tea Party, where the cynicism of the uh, Republican power brokers was where you know where uh, at the point where you're at the point you're discussing now. But I think they were pretty well run out of the party uh, after Mitt. Uh, was defeated, and the Christian right, Pence, uh, with some really cynical people, but also some serious uh, hardcore Christian believers, mm -hmm. uh, joined forces and became the present day uh, Republican Party. I, I don't think that it is a party of just cynical ma political manipulators. I think there's some serious believers in that party. Not only do I think that the party is completely filled with those sort of cynical, ambitious scumbags, I think the entire industry of politician is filled with ambitious scumbags. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's like yeah. any person from any party, and you know, look, this is a jaded thing to say, but that this is my hot take. Uh, yeah. I just think if you're, if you're a professional politician, your, your goal is to seek power because if you want to help people, there's so many ways to do it. And being a politician is not the fastest way to help you. I would say that people like McCain and Romney proved that there were times when they had a incredible pressure on them to toe the line with the Republican Party and they didn't. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I think that there are times when you politicians, they choose those times very carefully. But I think there are times when politicians of all political spectrums uh, can uh, follow their conscience and yeah. uh, simply there. Like but Obama that, Gate. That, yeah, but that, that party is gone. That ship has sailed. The GOP is no longer, is not even a, a sniff of the party that it used to be. It it's is now. I don't no, think any party actually yeah. holds that. I don't, I don't think any political party can... Uh, can actually survive if it holds to a specific point of view. Like right. That's you not know what? politics. That's suicide. Here's the thing. The Republican Party may need a new leader. And Bobby, you may get your wish because Donald Trump apparently on Monday said that he's been taking anti-malarial drug hydroxychloroquine <laughs> for over a week to prevent the coronavirus infection. Mm -hmm. I happen to be taking it, Trump said during a roundtable. A lot of good things have come out. You'd be surprised at how many people are taking it, especially on the frontline workers. Before you catch it, the frontline workers, many, many are taking it. Yep. So what you know, happens if he's right? <laughs> it's going to be fun. That'd be hilarious. Leave it to Trump employee health assassination. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. that smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, you know something, you though? You look at the... I, I'm sorry. There's, there's still some hardcore religious believers on or believers in a cause on the right and the left right and i think on the right they've they've just gone listen we will get what we want from him so we're gonna go with this dog and pony show mm -hmm. because it will bring in the second coming of christ right and the same it's not the same thing but you're seeing progressives uh on the liberal side coming up with much better reason mm -hmm. and saying we will not compromise to the degree that you want us to compromise in order to uh, gain power, that we will fight you on this right. to the point of destroying the party, did anyone which is hear, interesting. Did anyone hear, uh, look, this could be a rumor, but I, I was, I've been on a lot of podcasts recently and somebody had said it on air. But apparently, it could be a complete fabrication. I want to know if you guys have heard this, that a couple of Trump's family members were sort of uh, initial investors or something in yeah. hydroxychloroquine. Yep. 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 That's, That's true, true, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, who knows? <laughs> it, it's a rumor is telling the story. It, 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 literally took, it literally took, uh, like, I think five days for it to be proved because, like, as soon as... Trump started this posturing around hydroxychloroquine is like, oh, chlor chloroquine, chlorine should be used. I think that could work. And I tweeted out there as like, we are literally half a day from finding out that he is invested in this. And someone anonymously tweeted me, no, we're not. I'm like, oh, okay. Three days later, <laughs> guess what? And yeah, there it was, it was established that oh, yeah. he or 
people that he's related to uh, are all part of this. Exactly. No, I was just saying that um, it should be illegal for a president or prime minister to suggest treatment for people that uh, could kill them. Right. It's, that hasn't been pr clinically proven or uh, disproven either way. Uh, See, like, this is it's proven. I, no, I scientifically, love. it's proven that it is a deadly medicine that should only be used for people with malaria. Malaria, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. See, it's, this is really interesting for me, what you're saying. It, it's like I've always been fascinated with the history of bylaws. <laughs> Because bylaws are always based on some smart asshole going, oh, hey, I can game this. Right. <laughs> and lawmakers yeah. then going, oh, fuck, oh. no, we can't have that. Dude, you should, you should move to Canada. It is, <laughs> it is literally just paved with bylaws. <laughs> yeah. like, right. right. And, look, and, here's something, right. and look, here's at something, here's look at something it. Look at it. That is beautiful. Too, like, it's gorgeous. Something just occurred. Something just occurred to me that I, you know, I mean, I, it's almost embarrassing that it just occurred to me. But maybe he's not even taking it. Well, right? no, he's, I mean, not. Like, oh, he's no. probably no. lying. No. Wow! I did wow. Lie. wow, Bobby, it just lying. occurred to you. It, Come on, on there, buddy. <laughs> what <laughs> was that? The Italian thinking. side or the Chinese side? It was that slow. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> He just even got me. It's like, I know he lies all the time. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and I'm like, right. oh, he just yeah. has to lie. Yeah. yeah. Like, but oh, you know what really hits me about this whole Obamacare thing and the accusations he's throwing out about the investigation? It's, it's like you are playing politics in the most powerful empire in the history of the world. Empires. Oh, by definition, do not play nice. Mm. So why would you expect Obama to play? Like, who plays nice right. at that level? <laughs> You're being well, how do you mean, though? Do you mean? Whiny bitch. I mean that the idea that Obama and his coterie not, not be uh, for days to bring down Trump. Mm -hmm. Like the idea that he wouldn't is silly to me. That's childish to me. The, this is politics at the highest level for the highest stakes, right? You are dealing with people with a level of paranoia and a level of power. That's going to be phenomenal. Oh, it's a great mix, it's by the not, way. It's not going to be, a, and, and the idea that the Republic, that there is an actual political divide based on, you know, politicking at that level is asinine and bringing it up. You have to get to a point where it's like, oh yeah, China is doing this as far as, you know, manipulating computers and they can watch your every move and it's like yeah but you guys were just like jacking the cell phones of all the major political leaders in the world and now you're complaining am i not making sense again no no you got no it. you know what you've actually said something really interesting to me partly it was an assumption partly it was analysis but you know is the u.s as powerful as they pretend to be because it really does seem like like the balance of power is shifted and China's running things. I'm not saying that because I'm half Chinese, mm -hmm. although I am. No, no, it's very right? true. You know, and that, uh, to be honest, that's but, the source of Donald Trump's anti-China stance. Yeah. It's that America feels that right. it's the power slipping away. If you go to Africa, China is all over there investing in roads. They're investing Caribbean. in, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. The same thing in, in Jamaica, they are on it because they know if you want precious metals for your damn cell phone, if you want cobalt, gee, I wonder where it comes from. And the American strategy was this asinine sort of international monetary fund thing of strip all these countries of their health care, strip them of anything that even smacks of socialism, and we'll just pay nothing and, and we'll just rape the, the, the resources and, and who cares what happens to the people. Whereas the Chinese are smarter than that. They're like, you need roads? We'll build your roads, sure. Well, we need right. a hospital. Well, let's build that for you. It costs us nothing, you know? I think when you look at the fall, like I, I remember, and I guess this is me tooting my own 
which is kind of normal. But when when the wall fell, uh, was it eighty nine? That the the wall in Berlin. I'll fell? look it up. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> sure. But at that point, with all of the the crowing going on by the hyper capitalists uh, in the states, like it was like you knew it was going to be a shit show. Right, that they were like, yeah, my dick is huge. I'm gonna stick it in every hole I can. And <laughs> Obama Gate. <laughs> <laughs> and the world's been, you know. So ever since then, it's just been wow. And people don't. Okay, I'm gonna go on a tangent. Oh um, no. Yeah, maybe Yvette, please edit this out. Yeah. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> The, the Note to the affiliates, we're going long. We're going there you go. long. There you go. Really? Well, conspiracy theory. What is it? What's your, what's your tangent? What is it? Uh, people talk about the civil rights. Uh, it, there's not enough in-depth analysis of the, um, the fallout of the civil rights movement. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and 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 it's the reasons behind its success. Uh, one of the, the reasons is the Russians uh, saying to the colonies, the ex-colonies of Europe that the Americans were trying to recolonize, the Russians were like, well, look at the South. Look what they're doing with people that look like you, right? Mm -hmm. To the international community of color mm -hmm. and the Russians were kicking their ass mm -hmm. on a political level. And American, uh, including a president, and I'm not sure it was in the 50s, uh, came out and said, we've got to stop this. We cannot let uh, our in international image is being tarnished by what's going on in the South now. We've got to stop this. So the civil rights movement has a lot more to do with the Russians <laughs> than it does yeah. with a lot of other causes. And one of the other fallouts of the civil rights movement when they had that garbage workers strike that Martin Luther King uh, came in and spoke to and supported, there were these signs saying, I am a man, right? Falling into mm -hmm. the patriarchy of, uh, of the period. And it's interesting for me that 40, 50 years after that, capitalism or the, the, <laughs> the mavericks of capitalism were able to kind of go, oh, hold on, they're a man. So, which is the same as that guy I'm paying a nickel, but he's just white. Did you take your meds today, Lou? Shut up and listen. <laughs> so, so why would this maverick of capitalism pay a white male five cents if he could pay another man a penny? Well, you know what? This brings up what's happening right now out east. Uh, I wish I brought up the story or saved it because it's really interesting and it struck a nerve with me because, uh, of course, all across this country, we, the reason why we have the produce we have, we have the food on the table that we have, is because we import labor from Jamaica, from uh, third That's world. That's what I'm Europe, talking about. The Philippines. We import labor. So what has happened recently is there was a fishery, or I think it was a lobster uh, factory mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, out east. and. Uh, there was a delay because of course these workers coming in are essential services. So they, they're allowed to come into the country, but they have to be quarantined for 14 days. The premier of the province, somebody looked this up, but the premier of the province said, okay, until these foreign workers can get into the factories, we just need like regular people just come in like teenagers or whatever, right. just come in, work in the factory. Nobody came, nobody. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Cause Canadians are like, well, I don't want to, I know I'm living out east. Mm -hmm. I know that, you know, it's hard to get a job out here, but I don't know. All these immigrants coming here and stealing our jobs that we have absolutely no interest of ever doing, ever, ever, ever. Yeah. Even if, yeah. It, even if it puts food on our goddamn table yeah. in a time of crisis where yeah. I could probably put two lobsters down my pants every night and feed my family. Yeah. I would make sure there are rubber bands on it. Sometimes they tickle, but anyway, these goddamn immigrants... <laughs> yeah coming in here for 14 day waits and stealing my job that yeah. I don't want. This, yeah. is, this, is, this is the most important aspect 
um, hidden aspect of the North American economy, right? Mm -hmm. It's mi migrant labor, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. it, the, the thing is, and it's interesting, right? Because you realize there's all this anti-immigrant mm -hmm. uh, bias, and yet almost quite literally our economy is built on the backs of these people. Absolutely. Right. And it's always been this way historically. Well, obviously, we look at slavery with African Americans. We look at Chinese building railroads. I, you know, Absolutely. even if you think back to the like the pyramids of the Egyptians, like there were slaves. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just it's it's slave economy. Code of Han Hannah Rabi. I mean, and exactly. And look at what happened to there was a young woman, uh, uh, Clara Khan in Richmond, B.C. They were out on a stroll on a Friday afternoon near Gary Point when uh, they were verbally attacked by two white men sitting in a car. Sorry, Todd. We just keep on going. We have to have some nice stories <laughs> about white guys. We really do. Wow. Some of them are great. Anyway, so. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I'm a tribute to my race. <laughs> Absolutely. On occasion. Um, they were like, hey, you go back to your country. And she stood up to them. She said, I've been here since I was six. Go back where? This is my country. I'm a Canadian. Uh -huh. Which happens all the time, but it's just, um, it's uh, simply an expression of uh, uh, an aspect of our persona, our, our nature as a people. Was she your uh, girlfriend from the last episode? <laughs> <laughs> honey, he, I don't know what he's talking about, honey. <laughs> I love my wife. <laughs> I love my wife. I, I have a question for you, for you guys, and, and it's, it's about how I kind of feel about my identity now, and I wonder if it's an urban Toronto thing, oh, yeah. but I'm less and less inclined to consider myself uh, based on a national identity and more inclined to consider my identity more global or that I have a global empathy more than I have a national empathy. I don't I think it's contextual because when Sidney Crosby scores a goal, we're all like, we're so Canadian. Right. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> so maybe, <laughs> I'm, maybe yeah. I'm out there. Who the hell is well, that? Most, most people do, though. I mean, I think that identity is interesting because I think that it shifts um, when it's right. convenient. You know, like if there's a grant yeah. application and they're really opening up money for Chinese Italians, I am Chinese Italian as <laughs> fuck right. that day. Um, I, I, you know. I can't remember who the comic was way back in the day. This is a very dated joke, but sadly, the sentiments are still the same today. It was when Ben Johnson won gold for uh, Canada and yeah, the headline yeah. cycle went and I, it, forgive me to the comic whose joke this is. I wish I could remember who wrote this, but it's been ages. It, it starts out Can uh, Canada wins gold. Canadian wins us the gold. And then when the drug testing was kind of coming out, it's like <laughs> yeah. Jama yeah. Jamaican Canadian may, uh, yeah has tested positive for some right. substance and then like the next day it's like jamaican loses gold for canada it was like <laughs> uh, yeah a little yeah. bit a little bit that's how it works yeah. that's, how it works. Yeah. that's why you don't do steroids kids that's why <laughs> <laughs> but hydrochloroquine is okay just ask yeah. lewis and bleach i <laughs> used to be whitey i was a white guy from new brunswick i was gonna say you know what lewis the the older i get the more canadian i get the more i just like mm. I just dig in and I'm just, uh, uh, um, I, I wouldn't even, my identity is so closely tied uh, to this country in ways that are so un, even unconscious to me. You know, there are times mm -hmm. when I'm on set and some American goes, oh my God, say that again? Look, uh, look oh my God, he's so Canadian. I'm like, oh, that's Cocksucker. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, I guess for me though, because I'm so many generations Canadian. Um, oh, rub and, it in. Just rub that, it in. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't consider it of any great importance. I, I don't think that. I I think there are parts of my Canadian identity uh, that I respect, and the, those parts are actually what we all hope will be international. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it. Yes, it's part of Canadian identity but it's part of a global encompassment. Mm -hmm. See, you know, I would but, argue that, that that point of view is extremely Canadian and also a byproduct of your Canadian-ness, right? Because I'm not let, let's that. drop you in Nigeria right now and see what happens, you know? Yeah, let's do it. Not gonna, yeah, fuck you. Bring Mel Lastman with you. <laughs> yeah. And then eat him. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, I there's it's Canadian, but there's also something that came out of World War II and the whole Nazi thing, where you know the West kind of went, oh fuck, okay, <laughs> yeah, that was a bad direction, right? That infused. I, I just love that you, you that you called you know six million Jews, you know completely killed and decimated and six to <laughs> ten years of complete strife has that nazi thing yeah remember? You know? what that, was, that nazi thing by the way it's still going on are you <laughs> testing my empathy is that no, what you're no, doing it's the, you. the nazi Fuck thing you and your empathy. no my <laughs> point is that you 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 kind of dismiss the whole thing down to the nazi thing which is still going on like it, yeah. we've hit a point in society where you go yeah. that nazi thing and you go do you mean 1942 Nazi thing or like last right. Tuesday right. Nazi thing? What I'm thing? talking about is the right. Nuremberg trials yeah, okay. where the West went. <laughs> Let's ignore what we've done <laughs> in the past. We're going to put this all on the Nazis and it's bad. So let's spread that message. That bad yeah. behavior is bad, right? And then you have the UN coming in, globalization, like so many international factors have gone into my consciousness, as well as, you know, being Canadian. But we don't live in a, a global vacuum, is what I'm saying. But it's like, aren't all cultures built on the backs of murder? Yeah. Isn't that what we're talking about? Every yeah. country. Only the good ones. <laughs> Am I right? I mean, it's just it's like every sing, every single one, right? I mean, yeah. there's Rwanda, there's China, there's Egypt, Canada, there's Aboriginal. There's it, it's Rome. just like yeah. genocide, genocide, yeah. murder, raping, if, pillaging, conquering. We are so good at that. If you look at the history of the Zulu, <laughs> I mean, the Zulu oh, are a very powerful nation, boy. very proud nation, but they, mm -hmm. they basically murdered and dominated every single tribe around them. Absolutely right, and they were very smart too. Like it's mm -hmm. like the Romans, yeah. like they were, they were like the Roman Empire of, of Southern Africa. There well, was only the one that did not. Were the best. There was the only one that did not. Mm -hmm. Wakanda. Wakanda. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Wakanda forever, man. Yeah. But this, you know, this is the, this is what's Ow. you know sort of like conveniently missing from the coronavirus conversation is that. It's Darwinism, baby, you know? Like, mm -hmm. maybe that's not a very mm -hmm. popular thing to say. It's, it's not politically correct, but it's true. At the end of the day, it's kind of like we're all out for ourselves. Right. Well, and you the, know what? When I see, uh, when I see these people uh, marching and stuff without their masks on, uh, I, I have to admit a part of me, not a, not a part I'm proud of, but a part of me, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is oh, disclaimer. Disclaimer. Exactly. disclaimer. I, I would just like I, I haven't even heard this, and I'm already proud of what Andrew's about to say. <laughs> and well, I'm laughing. Wants to see the COVID deaths just tick up a little bit, you know? Yeah. Just tick up just, or maybe a lot. Yep. You know, just you vicious bitch. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. horrible, but you know, to a certain degree, you're just like looking at these Look, people. You, you don't you understand that it's if not you bad. die, there's less food for me. Yeah. Sorry, more food for me, right? That's true. Yeah. 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 Unless like you're part you of the supply chain. Oh, jeez. You mean, you mean like physically part of the supply? Like I'm... Bending over and picking tomatoes, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, th I, I honestly think that, uh, you know, there are going to be some places in America where COVID just doesn't get to or whatever. Some rural places, which is, you know, fine. Yeah. Um, kind of like Unless PBS. they have a prison. Unless they have a prison nearby. And, and that's actually yeah. a very good point. <laughs> Like okay. there are certain right. areas where we're simply lucky in Canada that COVID didn't get into prison. It's just luck. Yeah. It's not like right. You know, this is a know. point that's interesting for me. Did it did is do other people think that if if your economic salvation for rural areas uh, is supporting prisons and prisoners from your urban areas, does that kind of point to a really serious economic fuck up yeah. like your economy is fucked dude if that's if that's how you're supporting your rural economy oh that's they they do, they do grade three testing in schools to determine what uh the capacity is going to be necessary for prisons later on like they've done that correlation uh, yeah i didn't get what what's going on with that 
Did Todd oh, do yeah. it with me, or is it just me missing the point again? No, no, no. I, no. I, I understood. Yeah. I, I didn't yeah. get it either. Yeah. Oh, okay. Six uh, the, the, to 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 Lewis's point about yeah about the economy being fucked up and then and, and sort of it, it goes to a societal it's level insane. at insane. at the at the grade three level they're doing tests to go okay we're going to need this many cells in twenty years wow right? that's part of yeah. the curriculum is that what no, you're saying yeah it's 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 part of the I don't I I'm pretty sure this is done in the U S it may be done in Canada as well but they're able to correlate sort of like. Um, uh, education levels at, at the grade three level and project that into okay this is how oh, much we need who's going to end up in prison yeah yeah, 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 they, yeah, yeah they do yeah, this yeah. with iq too right like it's i think it's very controversial research right because you're sort of not like you're implying and, and sort of analyzing and speculating that you can't change right it's like there's a certain baseline of intelligence and that sort of directly leads to this and to that but mm -hmm. i just think our society is is more complex. For example, um, and I think this is a very relevant point that nobody talks about. They keep talking about three waves. Historically, there have been three waves. 1918, the Spanish flu, three waves, right? And so all of these brilliant scientists are using that as the precedent for what they think is going to happen now. Three waves. Okay, cool. Except the way that the virus was transmitted then and became globalized was because of world war, right? So the only way that that virus was really able to get to those other countries was on those ships, right? And the soldiers. Right. Now, every single day, you are on an airplane that yeah. can have people from 50 different countries on it and take it to a city. You can do that every single hour. Yeah. So that means yeah. there could be 5,000 waves. So here's my point, is that people negate the possibility of evolution. Right. It's like they're, all, they're always you're always looking in the past and being like, oh, that, that, that's what's going to happen because that's what happened. It's like, yeah, but there's been so many advancements today that you have to apply that to the knowledge, don't you? Right. The the other to get it back to Trump and and, and, and <laughs> the original and question, this, the original question, speaking about evolution, um, the, the 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 Darwinism aspect of, of this, it kind of struck me the other day in one of his press conferences that he was bragging about how close uh, they were to a vaccine. And it was like, your base isn't going to take it. Yeah. Why are you proud? You, you know, you, you then yell at everyone else that you hate. It's just like, oh, that, that's a little dessert for you. You can have it. I won't. I don't even wear a mask, yeah. you know, but, you know. Oh, but yeah, but the, the hydrochloroquine, my God, try it. Get it in a three pack. Can I say insane? about the? Isn't that insane that the guy is telling the world to inject themselves with bleach and uh, hydro, whatever it's called? But he's uh, like instead of working toward, instead of saying we need to work towards a vaccine, he's mm -hmm. that's just uh, just why is that insane? I, I mean, I'm looking at the history of our species, and that's like, <laughs> shit, that, that don't even get to four on a scale right. of ten, man. That's like two. <laughs> but this is good because this actually, I think, completes this section, like this sort of, you know, wax and poetic about Darwinism. It's like, if you're so stupid, if you haven't figured out that this guy is lying to you, and you can't do a simple Google search to realize that you should not be ingesting chemicals into your body, I'm sorry, you deserve to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've, I'm having a bit of an issue with how people keep quoting Darwin. Um, a lot of what people confuse Darwinism is Galtonism, his cousin who actually came up with the ideas of uh, survival of the fittest. Uh, that was Galton. Well, was actually, uh, it's in the book. Darwin, um, his cousin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, fuck y'all. What, what I'm saying, though, is Darwin was about... <laughs> It's that what the fuck moment, right? Like the world is constantly throwing what the fuck moments at everything and everyone. And it has, it can have absolutely nothing and generally has nothing to do with, um, with your reaction to that what the fuck moment. It's right. on a genetic level, which has nothing to do with you, right? Mm -hmm. Or a social, on already in place, uh, social, whatever, custom, mm -hmm. right, that will define whether you survive, 
right? It's not something that's innate in your intelligence and your, like, it's just, oh, okay, well, fuck, we made it. We don't know how. Mm, I'd right. see, but actions matter, right? I mean, agency sure, I'm talking about, is a I'm thing. I'm talking about Darwin. I'm talking about what Darwin said, and I'm probably misquoting it. Uh, well, I think I think Darwin was fun, was really talking about animals, but I think, but in a more complex society, he's talking about everything. <laughs> okay, sure, fair life. enough. But I'm saying the internet didn't exist then, right? So obviously, when you start to apply information and what people have access to in terms of knowledge, and that knowledge can de determine whether or not you live or die, right? Like that knowledge has to be factored into the Darwinian equation. Yeah, but so, if you're going to factor that in, then what happens if they develop a, an immunity to that drug or to mm -hmm. like death does not come from that drug and they develop an immunity to the next virus that comes because of taking that. Like we aren't in control. I Your intelligence but, is not going to lead you to survive. Okay, but more simply, I mean, instead of speculating about the future, let's, let's just talk about the present, right? Let's stay it's in like, the what the fuck moment. <laughs> well, yeah. it's not even a what the do. fuck moment. It's very simple. I just think that if you know there's this person who's been lying, right? And mm -hmm. you may die if you follow his advice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And most people in North America, I mean, I got to say at least 95% have access to the internet, okay? Mm -hmm. You're telling me, you can watch Fox News, but you don't have Google. Like yeah. you're talking about a three second Google search to save your life. If you don't have the intellectual capacity or you're so stubborn that you refuse to do that and then you actually die, that's on you. I th oh, yeah, I think, I, think part of the, I think part of the issue too is that people know deep down what the right answer is, but they're just too busy trying to own the other side that they won't let their guard up. And so I've been, I've been doing this wonderful thing lately of like finding people on Twitter uh, who pop up in my feed going, oh yeah, I'm not wearing a mask. It's a you know, sign of cowardice. I'm not on the left. I'm not gonna do that. And I, I will just reply with, cool, let a stranger touch your face then, Braveheart. Let's see where this goes. <laughs> and uh, that seems to get you blocked pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. The the thing for me though is whatever stance you take is no guarantee you're going to make it out of tomorrow. So, mm -hmm. so you can discuss every yeah. Go ahead. You none of us have a solution. Yeah, well, but I think that does. I don't think that means that none of it matters. I think there is value in the choices that you make. Oh, I sure. think it's quite yeah. I mean, and that's until it, you like, get hit by a truck. Look, there's an element of risk, but not there's not a, you don't necessarily get hit by a truck, right? So that's why nope. I think you you want to err on the side of caution Absolutely. and prudence. I'm 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 just what I'm saying is don't get so caught up that you think you're not going to end up with this virus head. Well, I was going to say um, one of the other things that evolves uh, in a Darwinian fashion is language, and so one of you guys sent me this link, which I found hilarious. Of these guys, where are they from? Baltimore. Oh yeah, I said that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they Isn't have, that great? So they, so every now and again, like linguists will send out, you know, you, you a, a, a tape or something, and you're uh, because they want to gather different uh, accents, right, from all over the world. So, mm -hmm. and if you're an actor, like back in the old days, they used to have cassette tapes. Back in the old days when you were a white guy from the That's south. That's right. <laughs> I used to be white before I injected yeah. it. Didn't show so, and linguists have been doing that for, for years. So they they study different accents, and this one guy, uh, and we'll see if we can put the YouTube link in there. This what this yeah, one guy this is terrible. Say the phrase, Aaron earned, and iron earn. I say bottom accents say this phrase out loud. Mm. Earn earn and iron earn. <laughs> Hold on, my earn earn. <laughs> Aaron earn and iron earn. Damn, what the fuck? We really talk like that? Earn, earn, and iron earn. You realize <laughs> how in that moment, oh my god, I've got an accent. Oh my like right. just talking, right. we got it you, you missed something there though in that. They were <laughs> that guy, the the center of that was also going, people talk like that? They're, right. Aaron earned that I they talk like he was freaked out yeah. that yeah. people actually talk unlike him. Mm. Right. 
And it all just actually kind of made me feel like, oh yeah, there are times when I'm on set and you know, the director reminds me how Canadian my accent sounds. And I just, oh, right. I was like, what? Air and earn and iron earn, eh? <laughs> That's right. Oh, you gotta check it out. It's hysterical. Oh my God, it's so funny. <laughs> anyway. Air and earn and iron earn. <laughs> that, oh, that was lovely. Yeah, I've that's all we have for this week uh, on upload uh, for me, Bobby Del Rio, Lewis Taylor, Todd Van Allen. Thanks a lot for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye.